And Detective Chief Inspector Peter Fox joined me in the studio just a short time ago. Detective Chief Inspector Peter Fox, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure, Tony. Um, let's start with how you got so frustrated and angry that you're publicly challenging the New South Wales Premier. Now, your letter to Premier O'Farrell begins like this. I've investigated so many sexual assaults in 30 years of policing that I've lost count. I've seen the worst society can dredge up, particularly the evil of pedophilia within the Catholic Church. What is the worst of it? Oh, Tony, I think most people would be uh, absolutely uh, crumpled up in tears to hear it. Um, just some examples of uh, what I've sat and listened to is that uh, one young boy at the uh, hands of uh, pedophile priest James Fletcher, um, he was 12 years of age when the uh, priest drove to a uh, secluded park outside of Maitland. Um, he told the boy to remove his pants and the boy was totally unaware of what was going on and quite embarrassed but uh, that particular priest uh, only penetrated him. Um, the boy wasn't aware at that stage that uh, his anus had been torn and he started bleeding. He was screaming in agony on the seat and uh, his knuckles were turning white. And uh, as the priest continued the thrust while he screamed, um, he said he focused on the Sir Christopher's cross on the uh, dashboard and watched it swaying back and forward to try and take his focus off the pain. Um, the priest uh, never relented at any stage during that and uh, even after the act was completed, um, he was totally uncaring for the child and simply sat back in the driver's seat and had a cigarette while he finished sobbing. Some of these stories, in fact, some of the statements that you've taken from witnesses, victims, um, so upset uh, a DPP solicitor that she simply couldn't go on with the case. Is that one of these? Uh, uh, that was one of those cases. And again, that was a solicitor that had dealt with uh, many cases of uh, sexual abuse. But the details and the, uh, the graphic images that were conveyed in those statements so upset her. And, uh, um, she was well known to me. She rang me up and uh, apologised profusely but said, I just cannot stay with this case. Um, I just can't handle it. You wouldn't be surprised by that, would you? Because, in fact, most people don't want to hear these things. They're too awful uh, for them to even comprehend. Well, as I said in my letter to the Premier today, um, you know, we do block a lot of those images away and we just accept the word pedophile or molestation. Um, but when you actually sit down with those victims and you're looking into their eyes... Um, you know, police are not immune from it and uh, you know, I sat there with so many of those victims and you can't but help feel their pain. Um, the, the agony is still there and it will always be there to some degree and uh, to just be so cold, even though you're, I'm in a professional role, not to have some empathy for what that, uh, that individual has gone through as a child um, just wouldn't be human. Some of them you saw in mental institutions, some committed suicide, you spoke to their relatives, um, all of them were terribly, terribly damaged. Oh, uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, um, one young boy, I, um, I actually had my wife drop me off in Maitland uh, and I went to the, uh, the uh, psychiatric ward of Maitland Hospital and I sat with that uh, young fellow for a number of hours just reassuring him that he didn't have to go on with the matter if he wasn't up to it. Um, you know, we broke for a number of months before he was ready to come back. Um, you know, these aren't easy things and there's got to be a lot of compassion, a lot of understanding from police. Um, you know, sometimes these people aren't up to going through to taking it to court. And we've got to sometimes uh, take that hard pill and sit back and say, OK, it's frustrating that we won't get this guy, but we can't put them through that or ordeal. Um, you know, the, the degree of courage, those that do come back and say, listen, I want to finish that statement, I want to see him taken to court. Um, how we can sit back and say they do not deserve our fullest support because, uh, my God, they've got some courage to be able to stand up and do what they've got to do and say what they've got to say in court and relive that ordeal. Um, you know, whether you're the Premier of New South Wales or uh, you're just somebody sitting back watching this on TV tonight, um, it's got to move you. It, it can't but move you. Um, it's terrible. As we've heard, the scale of this abuse in Newcastle Maitland Diocese over many years is truly shocking. It's astonishing, in fact. 400 victims, 14 clergy charging victims, six Catholic teachers convicted, three priests currently on trial. How does this much evil get concentrated in one small area? I don't think it uh, takes a uh, detective chief inspector to, uh, to work that out, Tony. It, um 
you know, alarm bells were ringing there for me many, many years ago. Um, so much so that I actually detailed a number of uh, reports to uh, hierarchy within the police department to uh, launch fuller investigations. Um, it was quite evident that something was going on. These priests were operating um, in adjoining parishes, abusing children. They were meeting at meetings uh, together. Um, in many cases uh, that I came across, uh, one priest who had previously faced uh, pedophile charges was donating parish money to the legal support of another priest uh, to defend him against those charges. Um, I had other priests that hadn't been charged with anything, removing evidence and destroying it before we were able to secure it. Um, and we just went around in circles. This is actually, this is, uh, you know, as, ho as horrific as the litany of uh, sexual crimes against children are. Uh, to me, one of the most disturbing lines in your letter was along these lines. I could testify from my own experience. The church covers up, silences victims, hinders police investigations, alerts offenders, destroys evidence and moves priests to protect the good name of the church. You're saying you have evidence of all of this? Oh, I... Not only do I have evidence, it's irrefutable. Um, most of that is fact. It's been admitted by many of them. Um, we encounter it all the time. Um, for people to sit back and say it's not going on, they've got their head in the sand. Um, the greatest frustration is that uh, there is so much uh, power and organisation behind the scenes that police don't have the powers to be able to go in and, uh, and seize documents and, uh, and have them uh, disclose things to us. Um, if know, things were covered up... If there was a serious cover-up, how high up the chain did it go, to your sure knowledge? I have definite information that um, of some covering up, certainly to uh, a number of uh, diocese bishops. Um, it potentially goes even higher than that. Higher than that? You higher mean into the top levels of the church hierarchy, is that what you're saying? That's correct. I I've got no doubt, uh, you know, um, to sit back and sort of say, listen, each of these dioceses are self-autonomous and uh, there's no one above that knows what goes on at uh, those lower levels. Um, you know, we live in a real world. Um, you know, it, it would be as if, uh, um, you know, I'm doing something in the police force at uh, Raymond Terrace and I'm not accountable to somebody else at a higher level at uh, Newcastle or in Sydney. Um, that's how the chain of command in any organisation works. Uh, to turn around and say, no, that's, we work something different. We didn't know about that. Um, I think most of the public are, uh, are smart enough to be able to put two and two together there. Approving it, of course, is, is the other thing, the critical thing, and it's what you, I guess, in a way, it's what you've been searching for all this time. In 2010, uh, two years ago, new witnesses started to come forward to give evidence about the activities of one pedophile priest called Father Macalinden. Now, one of those witnesses... Uh, I would describe as a key church insider, a whistleblower. Uh, you took a statement from this person. How significant was that statement? When I was directed to hand that statement over, I described her statement, um, and I'd never used the term about a statement in my entire career before that, but I described that statement as explosive, and I still describe it as explosive. What is disclosed in that um, is monumental. Um, I spent uh, a couple of months getting that, uh, that statement, typing it down in uh, very careful detail and spending an enormous amount of time with that particular witness who was, uh, you know, like many victims, and I should add, Tony, that uh, she wasn't simply a witness. She'd also herself been a victim at a much earlier time of McElinden. So, you know, when she came forward and was able to give all that information, it just opened a can of worms. Um, you know, I was able to go to another, uh, another number of witnesses who uh, began corroborating various aspects and saying, uh, yes, that is exactly what happened. So the credibility towards that uh, the witness was uh, certainly being elevated. So uh, what did that witness actually bring to the table, being an insider in the church? What was she able to say about what was happening in terms of the cover-up? Tony, I, I understand that. Strike Force Lintel has already uh, sent some briefs off to the DPP for consideration. Um, I don't want to uh, say anything as, as that may prejudice anything that's going on there, but uh, I think it's already been reported in the papers that uh, some of the police that are attached to that have already indicated that uh, there is an archbishop and uh, at least two other priests that uh, are implicated. Well, sorry, an archbishop, a bishop, and a priest that are implicated uh, in potential cover-up. Now, the DPP, I understand, has been sent those briefs and they are considering it now. 
Uh, one of the most disturbing things that you said earlier was that you were directed to give this material up. Uh, as I understand it, you were also ordered to stand down from the case, to no longer investigate this case. Is that a, is that a correct way of putting it? That's absolutely correct. That's um, spot on. And the reason given to you for uh, being taken off this case, which you obviously worked on for, well, as long as you could remember, I imagine. Well, I worked on it uh, since uh, I started investigating Dennis McElinden in 1999. Um, I, uh, I had contact with various witnesses over the years. I actually even interviewed uh, uh, Bishop Leo Clark, who uh, in 2003 told me when I asked if he had knowledge of any other victims other than the one that I already had and uh, very clearly said to me, no. Um, I later seen documentation after he passed away uh, that clearly indicated that he had full knowledge of other victims. Um, in you know, boiling it down to just simple words, he lied. Um, I was standing there with a colleague and he just straight out lied to me about his knowledge of other victims. Um, you know, hence the reason I say that uh, some in the church have no, you know, no um, reservation about lying uh, when it comes to it. Uh, to conceal the fact that they had knowledge of these crimes. But let's just go through this, because uh, if, I understand this, if I understand this correctly, you are the person, the, the investigator, who knows the most about this case. Um, you are the person who has interviewed the whistleblower, the key witness. You've got the statement in front of you that you think is dynamite, and you are told by a superior to stand down from the case and give over your material. Is that how it happened? Yes. That, that's, that's it in a nutshell. And are you able to tell us who that superior was? It's a very senior officer um, within the New South Wales Police and um, I was quite dismayed at it. Um, that particular witness was uh, quite distraught when I told her that I'd been told to hand the whole matter over. Because um, you had a personal relationship? Um, a personal professional relationship of, of, of trust, course, but a relationship of trust. Well, originally she actually uh, came forward um, to a newspaper reporter, Joanne McCarthy, and uh, after many months uh, she finally convinced this uh, witness to come forward and speak to police. Um, she actually said uh, refused and then she said the only police officer I will speak to is Peter Fox. Um, I didn't know her and it was explained that she had spoken to a number of other families who had dealt with me in the past and she said she would feel comfortable um, dealing with me now. On that basis, of course, I'm not going to turn her away. Of course, I'm going to say, yes, come in and, and sit down and, and we'll get that statement. Um, you know, I, I, I have my own thoughts on it. A lot of other people may have their thoughts. Um, About why you were taken off the case? I, I was just, I was very, very disappointed. Um, you know, um, I'm not being critical of any of the investigators that are working on uh, Strike Force Lentil. Um, they were handed the matter. Um, but um, as to the, the reasons why that was done, um, when I pursued the matter for uh, over a decade, um, I don't know. Do you believe it was because you're too independent of mind that you couldn't be controlled? Yeah, you know, uh, Tony, I don't think I'd be lying if I said that um, a lot in the police force would consider me rather outspoken. Um, I'm, I'm sure that uh, um, some hierarchy in the police force uh, won't be uh, wanting to put me on my, their Christmas card list after uh, the letter today and after speaking here tonight. Um, I don't care. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I don't know whether I'll face disciplinary charges or uh, anything in relation to uh, the stance I've taken. Um, and again, I don't care. Um, what I do care about is that there are so many uh, victims out there. Um, I can't divorce myself, even though I'm a detective, I can't say that I'm not human uh, and I haven't heard their pain. Um, there's something very wrong when you have so many pedophile priests operating in such a... Uh, a small area for such an extended period of time with uh, uh, immunity and you know my I submitted report after report um, suggesting that uh, you know, we needed to do a lot more about uh, investigating this um, why that didn't happen um, I, 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 I've never received a response um, let, let me just go there, there has been some response uh, from to questions that we asked uh, from the police in a statement sent to us tonight the police are saying that you were informed that strike force lentil would be fully investigating the allegations it was because they were under a different operational command or local area command than the one that you worked in that you were not uh, appropriately meant to be part of that strike force I don't know who said that, Tony. That's the first time I've ever had those comments made to me. Um, 
This is a statement from Assistant Commissioner Carleen York of the Northern Command, New South Wales. I, she wasn't at the meeting when I was directed to hand all the documentation over. Um, what I will say is that I did send her a report um, expressing my concern and the reasons why I felt that I should uh, be left uh, with carriage of that matter, um, detailing many of the issues you've raised tonight, plus a lot more. Um, nothing changed. Does this statement seem legitimate to you? Does it seem like the real reason why you weren't um, allowed to continue that investigation? I was never told why. Um, you know, to sort of say that I was, you know, Roman Terrace is um, a stone's throw from uh, from Newcastle. Uh, we, it's only a few kilometres. Um, you know, as you pointed out, I had a, a lot of experience, and um, you do, you build up a very strong rapport. It wasn't just that particular witness, but I'd also spoken to a number of other victims uh, that had been uh, terribly abused by Mac Linden. In other words, you're a logical person to be on the task force. Strike you can force. say that, but um, that's something that uh, I think most police are trained. Um, we're instructed when we go to detectives courses is that you don't hand victims around like uh, like numbers. Um, when they sit down and the victim talks to you, they open up to you, they pull their heart and soul out and they tell you things that they've never told another living soul. And then you've got to turn around and say, well, I'm not going to talk to you anymore, um, you've got to go down and see these people. Um, that I, I know from my training that uh, that is something that I'd never encountered before. It's going to seem passing strange to most observers as it does to me, I must say. But let me just move on because you've actually called for a, a Royal Commission. Um, if, you, if there were a Royal Commission, would this whistleblower, the insider who seems to know so much, be prepared to talk at the Royal Commission to give evidence and to lay out all of this um, in front of the public? Tony, I, I don't know. I was directed not to contact them again. Um, my last contact with her was um, she was virtually in tears um, when I handed her a copy of her st a statement and told her to hang on to it. And uh, that was my last contact with her. Um, um, I don't mind saying that uh, you know, there was a lot more that was said at that meeting that I won't say here. Um, I think that that is best left for another forum. But uh, to say that... Um, that was a very difficult moment and um, something that um, quite saddened me as, a, uh, as an investigator of uh, you know, well over 30 years in this job. But do you believe that a Royal Commission is necessary for people like this to be able to come forward? Is that the only environment in which it would really work? There's so much that uh, the police force can't do. Um, we don't have power. Um, you know, I have uh, gone to other government departments. Um, you know, I've gone to the Ombudsman over aspects of it. Um, you know, still today um, there are some antiquated uh, rules and laws where um, priests, for argument's sake, that have uh, had allegations of uh, abusing and molesting children, um, that is kept by the, uh, the bishop. Um, you know, if it's a school teacher in the Catholic school system, it goes to a different department. But uh, the bishops still retain that. Um, I don't know why. Um, there's no obligation on them, uh, you know, to pass that information on to police. And, uh, you know, I don't think that's a secret. The Victorian inquiry, and I think uh, the inquiries overseas and just history itself, says that that doesn't happen. Um, there's, you know, um, so much evidence on the basis that uh, pedophile priests, once they become known by their hierarchy, the hierarchy has a um, systemic um, pattern of not forwarding that information on. Um, we need to get around that. Because, uh, as I said in that letter to the Premier, and I, I don't want uh, the issue to become adversarial. I don't want to uh, enter into... Uh... OK, well, let's put it this way. Uh, I'm sure Barry O'Farrell will see this uh, interview. He's up until now said no Royal Commission. He doesn't want to be pressured into having a Royal Commission. Uh, he, I understand, won't even reply to your letter. Here's your chance to say something to him. What do you say? Well, on that basis, um, you know, I have three children. Um, at home, uh, probably like most families, uh, I've got some of their, uh, their photographs on the wall. They're now grown adults, but uh, we still have those photos of uh, when they were growing up on our wall. Um, two of them are now uh, um, have our grandchildren. Um, I'm sure Mr O'Farrell um, has, uh, has children. I, I understand he has two boys. Um, a lot of these victims' families have similar photos. I've walked in their homes and I've seen them. We're lucky. We haven't had to go through what some of those other families have gone through. If Mr O'Farrell just sits back and he can look up on that wall and see those pictures of his boys, 
um, he has a lot of thanks to give that his boys were never ever abused in the way that some of these other families had. And if uh, he has any compassion and humanity for some of these victims, he's got to turn around. You know, why can we have an inquiry in Victoria? And the police down there have been fantastic. Um, we've seen the evidence that the commissioner and the, the assistant commissioners have been right behind it, and they're, they're tabling stuff, and yet um, I'm dismayed here in a uh, state of New South Wales that we're saying it, it stops at the, uh, the Murray River. Um, they don't come up here. When we can make a change that is going to stop more victims from being abused, that's the real difference. We can actually impact upon the number. And uh, you know, to sit back and say, listen, we're not going to do that. Um, you know, something is, uh, is wrong in the state of New South Wales if, uh, if that's the attitude. Detective uh, Chief Inspector Peter Fox, an extraordinary story. We thank you very much for uh, coming on Late Line to talk to us. Thank you very much, for, uh, Tony, for, uh, for airing it.